Good morning, Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. What a blessing. What a great day. Thank you, Jesus, for inviting us here this morning. Father, we thank you. We just ask you to glorify yourself as we gather together over the internet, Lord, virtually. We thank you so much for inviting us to this meeting this morning. And with that, Lord, we know that you're going to reveal yourself to all of us in a mighty way. We're very excited to be here. Speak to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit, the triune God. Be glorified in our meeting this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What a blessing. Bless you, Lord. Thank you for this gathering. Praise the Lord. So good morning, uh, church. Welcome to your online church service here at Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. We have your announcements here for Sunday, May 3rd. We want to start off by asking you to pray for our mayors of Riverside and Harupa Valley. So our mayor of Harupa Valley is Anthony Kelly, and our mayor of Riverside is Rusty Bailey. As they come together and they seek counsel and wisdom from their helpers about how to reopen Riverside County. We also want, of course, to remember to keep our Governor Newsom in prayer as well. So we want to let you know that there is a leadership meeting today at 4 p.m. for our leaders. You, we're going to be doing a Zoom leadership meeting, so please join us at that time and be prepared to share little snippets about what you're doing in your ministry. So that is it, our, it for our announcements this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Connie. Praise the Lord. What a blessing. Yes, and uh, once again, we continue to pray. We continue to hold out hope because we know that our hope is in Jesus Christ. And so what a blessing that truly is and always will be. So as we join together this morning in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. As you're making your way to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, I'll pray for our time. And once again, Lord, we can never pray too much. We thank you, Lord God, for hearing each and every one of our cry every moment of the day, morning, noon, or night. And we are grateful. We find marvelous and wonderful comfort in that reality. So this morning, Lord God, we want to focus. We want to focus on 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 3, as your servant, the Apostle Paul, under the guidance of you, God the Holy Spirit, wrote this letter to the church. And what a joy that we sit together this morning as a church, guided and directed by the wisdom from above. Not earthly. The earthly wisdom is demonic. We look and we will receive the wisdom from above as we've asked this morning. So thank you, Lord God, for lovingly writing this letter through the Apostle Paul to the church, and we receive it as the modern day church this day, this beautiful letter from you to us this morning. Teach us, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Now, we remember last time as we gathered, Paul left us, if you will, last time, reminding us that how much he missed the Thessalonian church. And when Paul is speaking about the Thessalonian church, well, we just finished the letters to the Corinthians, and we found the joy that Paul had as he addressed the Corinthian church. And so we, we see here in the Thessalonian church, really Paul is just really addressing all the churches. I mean, there's the church in Philippi and there's the gathering in Berea and of course uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Colossians and just churches all throughout Asia Minor. And so when Paul is saying, hey, Thessalonian church, hey, we, we miss you. He means, man, I miss all the churches, all God's beloved people. And that's what we're joining together because we love the body of Christ. We love Jesus and we love the body of Christ. 
And so Paul left us last time. Hey, Thessalonian church, you are our hope and our joy. So what an absolute fun time that we, as we've been briefly going through this letter to the Thessalonians, Paul is just rejoicing in the church, and we are just grateful. Therefore, in verse 1, as we pick up this morning, therefore, when we could no longer endure it, I couldn't take it anymore, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone. And so Paul here is with part of his entourage, and as we look, I believe it's in Acts chapter 17, something like that, Timothy and perhaps Titus, they were on their way. And so they were on their way to meet with Paul. And so Paul is saying, is, is just really confessing, I could no longer endure it. I needed to know the condition of the Thessalonian church. Now we, we remember that Paul spent a very short period of time with the Thessalonians. He was run out, Paul and his group were run out of Thessalonica. And so as they were run out, they eventually ended up in Greece at Athens and they were there. And then when Timothy arrived to meet up with Paul, verse two, Paul tells us, when I could no longer endure it, verse two, I sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ. And so Paul was waiting for the regrouping of his full team. And amazingly, here comes Timothy. And what's amazing about it is Paul turned Timothy right back around and said, hey, head back to the Thessalonian church. Now, when we take a moment and think about Timothy, I think the majority of us, and I think it's fair to say, we kind of paint the picture of Timothy simply through the letters, the first Timothy and second Timothy. We, we get this personality trait of Timothy being a weak guy, a sickly guy, and certainly Paul is addressing his co-worker Timothy in saying, hey, you got to kind of muster it up a little bit. You got to put on the good fight. You got to be a good soldier. But amazingly here, when we see Timothy, see Timothy has been on the road. Paul is, is here in Greece, in Athens. And now Timothy finally arrives to hook up with Paul. But then Paul immediately says, Timothy, turn back and go to Thessalonia. Now we don't see any conflict with Timothy whatsoever. Timothy was a man, was a, in my opinion here, not just in First and Second Timothy, but here Timothy as a good soldier, basically has said, and we have no other reason to believe he didn't, basically Timothy says, great, Paul, what are my orders? And I'll be glad to carry them out to the best of my ability. A tough guy. A guy that was on the road, he finally thought, well, I'll get a little bit of rest with my companions. But it basically, when Paul saw Timothy, he turned him, turned him back around, put him back on the road. This is something that is, is a soldier would do. A guy that, he's not a guy that's complaining, he's not whining, he's saying, okay, great, I'll head back. And Timothy certainly knew in the back of his mind, while we got ran out of Thessalonica, this is not a peaceful place. I kind of like it here in Greece, but you know what? The Apostle Paul has sent me, and I'm going to go. And so that really has to broaden our understanding of this soldier, Timothy. He took his orders, and he went. For years, I spent time in the military. And really, I was a guy that literally, quite literally, had my bags packed, and they were sitting figuratively by the front door. I would get a phone call and I would be on a jet across the world within eight hours at times. 
I was a soldier and I took orders and I didn't question because that was my position. Timothy arrives, he's fully attentive to his leader, Paul, and Paul says, go, and Timothy says, great, I'm a goner. And so we need to give Timothy a pat on the back here. He is demonstrating quite the muster of a solid man. Anytime we would go to the mission field, and especially when we'd go overseas, I would always look at our team that the Lord was putting together, and I'd always pray, Lord, I need mis missionaries that are coming with me that are tough. Guys and gals that aren't going to get halfway across the world and start complaining. Can't have that. I need men and women that are stoic, receive their orders, and fight the good fight. And thank, thank the Lord, he always put together wonderful missionary teams, and it's great. But that's who Timothy was. He showed up. Paul, what do you want me to do? Here's your orders, Timothy. Timothy said, thank you, and I'm out of here. So what a joy. So I, when I could no longer endure it, I sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God, a minister. We get the title deacon from the word diakonos. Diakonos, we break it down into English to deacon, a worker, a fellow worker. And that's what Paul, that's how Paul is describing Timothy, our diac diakonos, our deacon, our minister, our servant of God, our fellow laborer. This is a guy that moves forward by the direction of God the Holy Spirit, and this is a guy that takes territory. He is a fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ, as we keep seeing over and over, the good news. The bad news for all of us, we have fallen short of the glory of God. The good news, Jesus Christ came and became the propitiation for our sins. As we receive that reality in our hearts and confess that with our mouths, we are saved. And we are one of God's children. Only by belief and only by confession. We believe, and once we believe, it just naturally comes out. Jesus is my Lord. And that's our confession. And so Timothy, our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ. So Thessalonian church, I sent Timothy, and the reason I sent Timothy, as we continue on in verse 2, was to establish. I sent Timothy to establish, establish you and encourage you concerning your faith. Once again, as previously mentioned, and will be reminded throughout these letters, Paul spent a very short period of time with the Thessalonians. And so Timothy is being sent to establish, this word establish, to confirm, to affirm. Both Paul and Peter tell us that neither one of them find it tedious to remind fellow believers of their position in Christ. They don't find it tedious to constantly check in, both Paul and Peter. These are two men, once again, filled by God the Holy Spirit. They don't find it tedious. Hey, I want to just remind you, hey, God loves you. Hey, Born again believer, Jesus died for you. These men didn't find it tedious to constantly remind the body of Christ of that fact. Why do they not find it tedious? Because at times we can drift away. And so these men didn't apologize when they wanted to check in. Hey, what's the Lord doing in your life? These bearers of the gospel of Christ, that was the topic of their conversation. Hey man, what's the Lord doing? Tell me all about it. 
Hey, man, God loves you so much. He loves you so much that he died on the cross. He did it all for you. And so these things are not tedious. These are great reminders. And we love that. And that's the topic of Christian conversation. Man, where is Jesus in your life today? What's he doing? Praise the Lord. So I sent Timothy to encourage. I sent him to encourage you concerning your faith that no one should be shaken by these afflictions these current afflictions that the, the church is going through i don't want anyone to be shaken by these afflictions afflictions that i don't want anyone being shaken by this hurting condition hurting you're being challenged i don't want anyone to be shaken because of your current hurting condition the assault against the church for you yourselves know that even we are appointed to this now as Paul was run out of Philippi as he was beaten and jailed and his crew and they were chased out with sticks and rocks and the whole thing you know, I, I just, in my mind, I, I, I have this funny way of imagining Paul and his group show up at Thess at, with the Thessalonians and they're still beaten and bloodied, bruised, and walking with a limp. That's just my mental imagination of Paul introducing himself. Hi, I'd like to give you some good news. And people are looking at this pathetic physical man thinking, you got to be kidding me. But Paul empowered by the Holy Spirit, gave the good news, and these Thessalonians received it. And so Paul is reminding, once again, you know yourselves that we have been appointed to this brutal application from those around us. I mean, these are folks that hate God. And so they're trying to shut me up by even stoning me to death. And so Thessalonian church, do not be shaken by your hurting condition. And remember how we met you, but yet press on for the Lord. Verse 4, for in fact we told you before when we were with you that we would suffer tribulation just as it happened as you know so so again when we showed up you knew that we just came out of tribulation therefore verse 5 for this reason when i could no longer endure it i sent to know your faith lest by some means the tempter had tempted you and our labor might be in vain Paul could no longer endure it. I've got to get a report. We were run out of the, the Thessalonian church and out of that area. We were run out, and now I just need to know. I want to make sure that no one has fallen away. And so this letter is a letter of comfort. So let's back up here for just a moment. We're seeing here Paul writing to the church and some of the verbiage he's using afflictions tribulation things that were mentioned in the past adversity grief things that Paul mentioned to the church misery now stick with me so afflictions tribulation adversity grief ministry keep those things in the forefront of your thinking but let's move to verse 6 but now that Timothy has come to us from you, he's, he's returned with his report, and he brought us good news, the good news of your faith and your love. Man, I was overjoyed when, when that soldier Timothy came back with this report. He hustled back. He couldn't wait to get back and give me the report because he's a good soldier. He's a good deacon. He's a fellow worker in the gospel of Christ. He's a tough guy. And he came back with this good news and described your faith is solid. And when we have faith, all of a sudden, we have the loving kindness 
of the Lord, the loving kindness that a dying world is looking for and don't find until they put their faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ and are accepted in the beloved and accepted by God the Father, by Jesus Christ. The only way, the only truth, the only life is through Jesus. And so when Timothy went back to Thessalonica, went to the church, found the body of Christ solid in their faith and demonstrating their faith by their love. And so he brought us that good news and that you always have good remembrance of us. You didn't forget us. Remember when we were looking at the Corinthian church? When Paul had left for a period of time, the Corinthian church basically threw Paul under the bus. But here, as Paul was physically removed, Timothy goes back and they said, hey, our faith is strong. We love one another. And oh, send Paul our love. We are praying for that guy. And man, Timothy must have just been beaming. And so Timothy spent his time, but then he said, hey, guys, I've spent some time with you. But man, I got to hot put it back to Paul. I got to give him this message. Do you mind? And the Thessalonian church says, hey, we're going to cut you loose, Timothy. We have loved seeing you, but man, send our best. And Timothy was just so glad to bring this message to Paul. Man, they remember everything that you did, Paul. Everything that the group did. They're praising the Lord. They love you. They send their best. And they are fighting a good fight. Man, how refreshing. This tough guy, Timothy, man, said, man, he is bringing the good news and he wasted no time so and we know that you're greatly desiring to see us Thessalonian church as we also desire to see you and so it's that communion that fellowship that gathering together the Saints bound by the love of Christ and so Paul is absolutely just overjoyed with this wonderful upbeat message from Timothy Therefore, verse 7, therefore, brethren, in all our affliction and distress, we were comforted concerning you by your faith. So once again, we've seen to the church, affliction, tribulation, adversity, grief, misery, distress, these are all things that people seeking comfort are not going to find. We have good news, but a dying world loves and justifies their current sin-filled condition. And therefore, the church is always going to be marked for some kind of an attack. Now, those who walk around and try to convince you and I as the church, oh, once we come to the Lord, everything is going to come up roses. <clears throat> oh, sure, for periods of time. But we go from peak tops to valleys. And anybody that tries to tell you that while you're in your valley and they try to tell you, oh, where's your faith or God's mad at you or whatever, it's anti-biblical. And if something is anti-biblical, may I dare say, it's anti-Christ. Because the Word became flesh. And the Word, God the Son, fully God, fully man, Jesus Christ, dwelt among us. The psalmist tells us that Jesus was a man of sorrows. When we take a stand for Jesus Christ... And glorify him oh we have favor from the Father but we have been disconnected basically from the world but as the Lord empowers us he will allow that good news message to go out and he will allow it to touch who he desires to touch and we can continue to move forward and so we see these things hey even though in our current condition, Paul was saying, in our current strife, we have been comforted. Remember Paul writing once again to the Corinthians, the Lord comforts others 
and then desires us to comfort others with the comfort that he has revealed to us in our lives. So as the Lord has given us victory through our trials, we need to share that with others and say, hey, God will get you through this, but you need to lay down your life and you need to pick up your cross and follow him. And as we allow our lives to demonstrate that, it can't be refused, no matter what your history is, no matter who knows who you were years ago, weeks ago, whatever the case may be. At the end of the day, God's finished work in your life, in my life, is the testimony that we hold high. Jesus changed my life, and those that are watching that knew me 20 years ago, 30 years ago, they hear me now, the message now, and they know. They look at one another. They look at themselves in the mirror and say, yeah, Lord, you did change that guy. And now the bottom line is, is when you look in that mirror and you see that person that has not been saved by the finished work of Christ, you need to just simply ask Jesus into your heart. Jesus, I turn from my sin. I ask you into my heart, and I want to praise your name to your glory. If you do that right now, you are saved, you are born again, and you will be changed through God's power, through his timing. And so Paul is saying, hey church, even though we are in distress, we share the joy of the Lord together, church. And Paul is rejoicing Verse 8, for now we live, and it says in most of your translations, if, it should really say since. So let me start again with verse 8. For now we live since you stand fast in the Lord. The joy of the Lord, what God is doing in someone else's life. That's why Paul wants to know, hey, what's, what's the Lord doing in your life? Wow, that gives me so much joy, so much peace, so much happiness. Great, thanks for sharing Oh, and remember, God loves you. He doesn't find it tedious to remind. So we live, ever since I got that report, we now live solidly, confidently, and we stand fast because you stand fast in the Lord. So the Apostle Paul, truly apostle, but yet we see him clearly through these letters to the churches that he was Pastor Paul. We also see Paul identifying himself as a spiritual father. And if you're willing, a spiritual mother to a degree, not in a weird kind of way, but just a guy that was patient, kind, and long-suffering, many motherly qualities, if you will. But certainly we see the Apostle Paul as brother. These many hats of Paul. Verse 9, for what thanks can we render to God for you? For all the joy with which we rejoice for your sake before our God. I mean, how can we thank God any more than we already do? God is, in other words, God has just overwhelmed us with joy. So how can we thank him any more? But we'll continue night and day praying, and we'll be praying exceedingly that we may see your faith, your face, and perfect what is lacking in your faith. So Paul is saying, I'm overjoyed with this verbal report, but man, now I want to see you physically even more. Man, we can relate to that right now, can't we? Soon and very soon. <laughs> but Paul is saying, man, we'll continue to pray, and when we get back together, because I spent a very short period of time with you, I'm going to continue to teach you in the good things that you, you're, you may be lacking in. Paul was a teacher, a pastor teacher. His desire was to sit with the congregation and to teach and to pour in to the folks, to the sheep that God allowed Paul to oversee. So I can't wait. So when we see one another, we're going to have a great time and we're going to open the word. And it's going to be great. I can't wait. I can't wait, Paul is saying. And now as we conclude this morning, verse 11, 
now may our God and Father himself. Talk about personal. Have you ever heard people say, well, you know, the big guy way out in the cosmos there. He's just floating around and kind of just watching us. You know, Paul puts that to rest right here. Our God and Father himself doesn't get any more personal than that. Personal relationship. Not just knowledge, but a relationship. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ, may they direct our way to you. May they open the gates. And oftentimes when I'm praying, my wife and I, we would pray. And often I would conclude, Lord, open the doors that you would like us to go through. But then, Lord, I always, I always say, but I humbly ask, Lord, close the doors that you don't want us to go through. That way your will be done and glorify yourself in that. So open as you see fit, but close as you see fit likewise. We see that often with the Apostle Paul through the book of Acts. So open and close as you see fit. So May the Lord direct our way to you as he sees fit, as he desires. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in what? Abound in love to, first of all, one another. Abound in love to one another, the body of Christ. And then to all than those that are outside, if you will, the inner circle. Let those that see your love in the body of Christ and they desire to come into that, love them in likewise. But nonetheless, love them no matter what. About your daily routine. You're heading to get gas. You're going to the grocery store. Love the people around you. So love the body of Christ, love one another, and love all just as we do to you use us as an example follow us as we follow christ what a joy so that the lord may establish your hearts blameless in what in holiness before our god and father there again sounds pretty personal well it is before our god and father at the coming of our lord jesus christ with all his saints. And so Paul, overjoyed, rejoicing, thanking God for Timothy, thanking for God for Timothy and his focused desire to conclude his mission. And Timothy did a great job. Then praise the Lord, hey, the Thessalonians are doing great. Paul now knows how to direct his prayer even more. And what an absolute joy. And then he leaves us with that little bit of thing that we want to question. And the Thessalonians are going to question shortly. Jesus Christ coming with all his saints. Wow, that's a, to a topic and a subject that we want to look at very closely, don't we? But to suffice for this morning, saints. Let's be clear. Saints are born again believers. Saints aren't statuettes we see around town or whatever. Saints are the body of Christ. How do you become part of the body of Christ? You become born again. Jesus Christ himself speaking to a religious leader, Nicodemus. Nicodemus, you're a great teacher. You know your material well, but there's one problem, the words from Jesus Christ, God the Son, you're not born again. Born again, what are you talking about? Oh, you need to be renewed. You've been physically born because you and I are having a physical conversation. Therefore, you need to be born again. And born again quite simply means you need to be born from above. You need to have that experience directed and guided by God the Holy Spirit as he 
points you to Jesus Christ, you and I, as born-again believers, have received Jesus as our Savior. As we realize that we were sinners by the conviction of God the Holy Spirit, instead of running from that, and many of us ran from that conviction for years, I can attest to that. But it's the time, and today is the day, that if you are being convicted by God the Holy Spirit of your sin, you need to stop running. And you need to declare to your own self, God already knows it, but you need to confess. You need to, you need to just say, in an act of submission, you need to say, hey, I am a sinner. And I've tried everything that I could try, and I am empty. I'm a sinner, and you simply ask Jesus, Jesus, as I turn from my sin, would you come and fill my heart? And as you pray that prayer from the heart and you speak it with your mouth physically, so it's in the heart spiritually and physically, the two come together, the physical and the, the supernatural. When you, when you confess, you believe and you confess and you ask Jesus as your Savior into your life, instantly you become born again. And then the journey begins. So if you've not done that, simply receive that conviction, confess, turn, and ask, and you will be saved. Born again. Then, when Jesus comes, he will return with you and the rest of his saints. And again, we'll look at that as the Lord tarries. So in the meantime, next time as we meet, Paul is going to give a plea for purity. And man, we can't have enough of that, can we? And it's a joy that we can pray for that, and what a blessing. We'll see you next time as the Lord tarries. Be safe. Stay informed on the directives of our municipalities, as Connie had mentioned earlier. We don't want to break the law, yet we also want to allow the Lord to glorify himself through our lives. And so what a blessing. We'll see you next time and read ahead 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And then we'll see you Wednesday night, Calvary Chapel Harupa Valley Facebook, 7 p.m. And we'll continue through the book of Isaiah, picking up at chapter 8. What an absolute joy. Look forward to seeing you. Let's go out and be reminded that in a world that's always changing, Jesus remains the same. Amen? And leadership, I'll see you tonight at 4 p.m. And we'll have our virtual meeting. Praise the Lord. In a world that's always changing, Jesus, Jesus remains the same. Yes, in a world that's always changing, Jesus, Jesus remains the same. And in a world that's always changing, yo, Jesus remains the same. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's the way, the truth, the life. In a world that's always changing, Jesus, Jesus remains the same. Hey. In a world that's always changing, yo, yeah. Jesus remains the same. Yes, in a world that's always changing, you know, Jesus remains the same. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's the way, the truth, the life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's the way, the truth, the life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, he's the way, the truth, the life. Praise the Lord. Serve him today, and I know you are. God bless you. Be safe. And hey, talk to you later. Pastor Greg, Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. Hey, we're so glad that you've been enjoying the videos, and we just know that God has been touching you and just giving you a blessing through these teachings. But you know, we'd like to give you a challenge. Since this material is available, as you know, you can go to the website and pull these videos down, but we would like to challenge you. 
Since you're enjoying these teachings on a regular basis, we want to challenge you, why not share these videos? You've got lots of friends on Facebook and so forth and social media. Why not inject the gospel message, the Bible teachings of, of the Lord into, into your share partners? It would be a great opportunity to maybe start a conversation, but we would really like you to be encouraged and consider passing these teachings on. We want people to be benefited, so let's allow the Lord to do what he would like to do. But in the meantime, we're so glad that you've been joining, joining us and enjoying these teachings. They will continue to come as the Lord tarries. But again, enjoy, enjoy the Lord. Thank you so much and continue to pray for Calvary Chapel here in the city of Harupa Valley. God bless you, Pastor Greg, once again, and we'll catch up with you next time. Have a great week in the Lord. Bye now.